Welcome back, guys, to the channel. Today, we'll be talking about the Los Angeles Rams glue guys, guys that basically are underrated. They have a role, and it's not just a role to be overlooked. We're going to go right into it. Before we do, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and drop a comment if this added any value to your day. Now, we'll get into it. Starting off on the offense, there's a few guys here. Uh, now, I'm not going to say 100% that it's fair to say a guy that only played three snaps in Tremaine Ankrum is a glue guy. But what I will say is that he is worth an honorable mention here. A guy to mention because in the future, this is somebody who can play all five positions. Sean McVay raves about him. There's a good chance he's going to end up being your right tackle of the future. So I'm going to say he's an honorable mention for now. He's only played three snaps, albeit they were great. Uh, you know, those three snaps that he's played. Um, but if you were to go with offensive line, you would probably have to go with Joseph Noteboom, a guy that, you know, was asked to kind of just, you know, go right in there and take over for Andrew Whitworth after he suffered the injury against Seattle. And he played pretty good towards, you know, the end of the season. So this is somebody that was originally drafted to take over for Whitworth. He's been waiting for his opportunity. And now, you know, he still doesn't have it. He's still waiting. Uh, we don't know if he'll be the left tackle or not, but he's done a nice job when needed. So Nopum, in a sense, is kind of a glue guy. I uh, wouldn't put him in the top tier of this group, but I would definitely say he's worth a mention as well and probably worth more of a mention than Tremaine Ankrum because he's played more than three snaps. Uh, but sticking with the offense here, our number one glue guy in the offense to me is Daryl Henderson. When you look at what Henderson brings to the table, uh, first off, he was flawless in pass protection last year. A lot of people don't realize that. He had a great grade from PFF, and in 23 reps, he only gave up one pressure. And this is somebody to me that's getting better each year. Would have had an opportunity to go for over 1,000 yards if, one, he didn't get hurt, and two, he actually got the rock. The problem was all, all those carry shares, he was sharing those with Cam Akers. He was sharing them with Malcolm Brown. You could argue he's even sharing them with Robert Woods because Robert Woods was used a little bit in the run game as well. So when you factor that all in, of course, the stats aren't going to be there. But Daryl Henderson on film was impressive. And by all accounts, he was the best running back in Los Angeles last year until maybe the, you know, the playoffs because he got hurt. Cam Akers emerged. But before then... Daryl Henderson looked like the best back in L.A., and that's a good thing because it's not a bad thing to have two quality starters or at least two quality players that could be starters. The Rams do have that, and Daryl Henderson's ability to catch out of the backfield as well as taking it to the house, he's got that home run hitting ability, really offers a lot. And now here's the thing. As much as you love Cam Akers, let's not rule out the fact he had a freak uh, rib cartilage injury last year and he had a high ankle sprain this is somebody that's had you know already in his first season he's had some issues with injuries so has daryl henderson but there's a good chance if cam Akers misses a game or two henderson could pop right in there and have some serious success he was my number one running back in the 2019 nfl draft and for me i think he provides so much as a glue guy that i'm going to include him in, on this list Moving on, we go to the defense, and we're going to go to the defensive line, and we're going to go right over to Greg Gaines, the big nose tackle, former fourth-round pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the same draft as Daryl Henderson out of Washington. Uh, when you look at what Greg Gaines brings to the table, it's quite impressive, to be honest with you. He hasn't really been utilized enough because here's the thing. They have Michael Brockers. They signed Sean Robinson. Sebastian Joseph Day emerged into uh, maybe the best nose tackle in all of football. And oh, by the way, you have Aaron Donald. So it hasn't been easy, and you could throw in Morgan Fox into that route. So because of that, you have a guy in Greg Gaines who just hasn't simply gotten the playing time. But when needed... And called upon, he has answered the bell. So I look at Greg Gaines as a glue guy, especially on this defensive line. You could argue Bobby Brown and Ernest Brown, but the problem is with those two is they're rookies. I'm not going to make a, a glue guy a rookie when I haven't seen him play in the NFL yet. When you look at the fact they have Donald, they have Ashawn Robinson, they have Sebastian Joseph Day, now no more Brockers and Fox, there's a really big opportunity here for Greg Gaines. He's going to have to battle it out. Uh, likely with the two that I just mentioned in Brown and Brown. But the fact of the matter is this, he is the more 
seasoned veteran. He's a guy that definitely could get in there and could have a serious impact as the fourth man up. I think this is somebody that has shown you he has some solid pass rush ability, and he had a great grade uh, by PFF coming out of college as one of the uh, basically the most efficient pass rushers um, in the entire draft coming through the interior. I think he had the highest grade besides everyone not named Quinnen Williams, which is saying a lot. Uh, but when you look at what he can do in the run game, he's gotten better each year. You just haven't really noticed it because he doesn't play a ton. But when he does, he's effective. So uh, Greg Gaines, uh, for me, is going to be in there. And then we'll move over. Uh, keeping with the defense, we have two more here. I'm going to mention linebacker Troy Reader. This is somebody that was a UDFA out of uh, Delaware. And, of course, you know, he transferred from Penn State. But when you look at what he did at Delaware, I mean, he should have been a draftable player by all accounts. He didn't get drafted. And so the UDFA not only made the roster in basically the shock of many people, but on top of that, he ended up starting eight games in that season in 2019. Then you follow up 2020 and what he was able to do, you know, coming in, being a backup, a, proje a projected backup to Micah Kaiser and Traven Howard. Howard goes down and even Micah Kaiser went down. And so Troy Reader just basically slid right in there and he became quite the uh, the impressive player as far as rushing the passer. He had three sacks against the, uh, the Washington football team last season. And so he's somebody to me that just doesn't get enough credit. He's got to get better as a tackler for sure. He does miss a few tackles, but the way he improved not only as a pass rusher, but in coverage offers a lot of upside moving forward. And in a defense that's likely going to have a rookie and Ernest Jones starting and having Traven Howard, who didn't even start last year, uh, coming in to have a guy like Troy Reader as the third option is just a dream to me because I think you have him, you have Kaiser, you have Kenny Young and Christian Roseboom. They're pretty depth filled at the linebacker position. And there's a good reason for that. Troy Reader is a big reason and could even end up starting. We will see. And then the last one here, a guy that's not really appreciated enough um, and really surprised me. He was a pick initially as a special teamer. But when you look at the fact this guy is a super athletic freak uh, coming out of Penn State, it is Nick Scott, the seventh round pick from the 2019 NFL draft. We're talking a lot of 2019 players, but here's the thing. Nick Scott was asked to start in the playoffs. He was asked to come in and he was asked to take on a serious role against the Seattle Seahawks and against Green Bay. And the fact of the matter is he was up for it. He really made an impact. And you saw this guy who's been a special teams guy for a while now. I think you really saw him start to emerge. Now, he is not going to get the nod over a Terrell Burgess or a Taylor Rapp. But when you have a fourth safety that is good enough to start in playoff games, that leaves a lot to be desired. And so for me, I'm looking at a guy like Nick Scott. You have... Terrell Burgess, who I love, but let's be honest here, he suffered a broken ankle last year, and Taylor Rapp, who's had a myriad of injuries. Uh, so you look at those guys, Jordan Fuller had an injury last year. It is very important to have depth in this league. It's a next man up style league, and if anybody gets hurt, it's good to be able to count on Nick Scott. On top of that, the Rams really can do a lot because he is a great tackler. He didn't miss a tackle last year, great in space. And he can rush the passer. He is a good blitzer. He's very well calculated in that department. When you see, you know, he ran a 4-4 uh, at his pro day. And of course, you know, this is somebody, again, you know, has a crazy vertical. So he has ball skills on top of that. I'm sorry. I think Nick Scott is somebody that's being slept on. And I to the point where I almost did a video on him breaking him down. Uh, so I will leave it at that. The glue guys as followed Daryl Henderson, Troy Reader, Greg Gaines, and Nick Scott. If you want to look anywhere in a next man up league, if you look and see Daryl Henderson as your backup running back, if you look and you see Greg Gaines as your fourth defensive lineman, if you look and you see Troy Reader as your third linebacker and Nick Scott as your fourth safety, you know you're doing things right. The Rams don't get enough credit for that 2019 draft. And to be honest with you, I didn't love the 2019 draft. 
it's looked pretty good. And if Taylor Rapp can get back to where he was his rookie year, it's going to look great. So that's my thoughts on that. If you guys, you know, believe that, or if you have anybody else, be sure to comment. But those are my thoughts on the glue guys. Who is your glue guy? You let me know in the comments below. Until next time, guys, you guys take care.